Welcome to Off The Play. My name is Jackson Clark, joined here with Paul Robinson from the Resi's Footballer. And the lady in the middle certainly needs no introduction, Queen Taylor Harris. Thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Thanks for having me. So, Big gig today. Yeah, Taylor, I'll start first up. Now, most people probably know you from your AFLW career, which is still just beginning really. But I want to talk about boxing. You do have a fight coming up. When is that and who is your opponent? My next fight, uh, 18th of October, next Friday night. So looking forward to that, obviously eating really healthy right now, coming up to weigh in. So that's probably my least favorite part because I don't mind um, a few treats and pancakes and burgers and shit. So um, dealing with that, but all good because it's for the Australian title and um, versing Marguerite Butcher, who has become a friend of mine. So it's a bit um, it's not awkward, but it's kind of like, oh, I wish I wasn't versing my mate because one of us is going to lose. So yeah. um, it's not going to be me, uh, I hope. So <laughs> that's, I, like that. I guess that's the way sport is and same thing as footy. So just have to get over it. And... I suppose, sorry to cut you off, with the rise of your Conor McGregor types, I just couldn't touch on that. Are you a trash talker type? Like, do you think <laughs> as you go up the range, you're going to start working on that trash talk game? No, I am. Um... If you have anything to say, you can look down the camera now. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm the worst. At, like, I can't, it, it's not in me. Like, I've probably yep. worn the most appropriate jumper today. <laughs> and I didn't even mean to, but I just, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work for me and if anything I'll just end up looking like a dickhead so I'm probably not gonna go with it but if anyone else would like to like I don't know trash talk me or whatever it'll probably look bad on them because I'm never gonna re respond because I just don't care for it like I can't be bothered to be honest I've got heaps of other stuff going on so yep. not gonna waste my energy on that. So what's life like for a boxer could you give us uh, an indication of what your training schedule is like? Yeah so uh, typically in a week I'll train Two, day, two sessions a day, um, might have a day off on Sunday or um, maybe only one session for a couple of days or whatever it might be, but I actually love training, so it's kind of hard for me to, to have the time off and I always find myself when I'm supposed to be relaxing or whatever, I'm in the gym and um, boxing is something that I really enjoy and I love the atmosphere when you walk in the gym and all your mates are there and you walk in and everyone says, how's your week going? And I think that's quite cool. So. Whether I'm training or not, I'm still generally around the boxing gym. I guess it's not too dissimilar from a footy club, really. Like, I know it's seen as, like, an individual sport, but you have got your team around you. Yeah. I guess it's that vibe that yeah. sort of, yeah, comes Do you get it. more nervous before a big footy game, a big AFLW match, or before hopping in the ring? Uh, well, both, but I think probably the reality of boxing, if you, um, if you get knocked out, it's in front yeah. of all your mates, and <laughs> you've told them to come and pay for tickets and stuff, and then all of a sudden you you eat shit so it's probably <laughs> a little bit more daunting in that aspect but I suppose the same thing can happen with footy. I guess the other thing with boxing too as you mentioned so eloquently you eat shit you're yeah. by yourself yeah. eating shit <laughs> it's a game of football you've got all your other teammates around which makes it a little bit better. Yeah we're all <laughs> eating like a feast of shit so <laughs> but um yeah no it's yeah both I guess there's there's daunting things but I think I've managed to find a, a level head before fights and before footy that I um yeah really kind of center myself and realize why I'm doing it and what the reward is and I guess if I wasn't that dedicated to it I would not put myself in that position because it's it's uncomfortable but I guess I've learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. I suppose it'd be difficult too finding other women of your size and athleticism and experience. Do you get in the ring and have to spar with males? Yeah all the time. I sometimes prefer sparring with guys because yep. I guess it um, typically like guys are probably going to be heavier than me and a bit more of a challenge and probably more experience. For me I don't have much experience at all to be honest. I've mm -hmm. I've been boxing for four years maybe, but from the very start, like just yep. learning very raw. I'm still, still undefeated. learning. Yeah, undefeated, but I'm still learning heaps. And yep. um, the fights that I've had, they've been, a couple have been challenging. A couple recently I, I won in the second round, so um, didn't quite get to work on what I was hoping to work on. Uh, and the only way you can get experience is actually fighting. So it's kind of hard to, to get that. But then I guess sparring, that's why I like to spar people who are much better than me. and. Um, if I get smash inspiring, that's fine with me. Yeah. And I did, um, on the weekend, I sparred with a lady named Arlene, who's a, um, a world champion. So uh, she really taught me a few lessons and nothing major that, that hurt me or anything, but just in terms of she knows what I'm going to punch before I know what I'm going to yeah. throw. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool. And if, you're not, if you don't have that mindset, you're probably not going to go too far in a sport like boxing that reality checks are necessary. And mm. um, I don't believe that I'm... Um, delusional that I think I'm some sort of amazing boxer. I think I'm a boxer that's learning and um, still quite immature in terms of, of boxing experience. But you do have big aspirations, I'm sure, to go as far as you can in boxing. And is it a tough juggling act, I suppose, dealing <coughs> with 
life as a professional footballer and also as a boxer? Yeah, the thing I've got, I guess, in my corner is no one's working harder than I am because I'm yep. all year round. I'm either f well, playing footy in a yeah. in a as professional uh, format as I can at mm -hmm. AFLW, and then I'm boxing mm -hmm. full time too. So I think that's something that I've got um, puts me in good stead and. Yeah, it kind of keeps me fit all year round yeah. and probably better than in the off-season being on the beers, beers. All, se <laughs> all season for me. But I, yeah, I guess I, I sacrifice yeah. that side of things. That yeah. Maybe even to the, to the extent that socially I probably miss out on, on a bit, but I find my social, social stuff at the gym and yeah. um, my friends who are like-minded and things like that. So yeah. it's all good. Yeah, perfect. So footy season, obviously not far away for you. Well, you know, give or take. Um, <laughs> this is going to be... It's this coming. Is, yeah, it's coming. It's not far away. It's on the way. Um, this is going to be your first season since last year, obviously, which is... That's <laughs> 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 the wording. <laughs> obviously, last year was massive for you. I think everyone knows about it. There's no need to delve into it too much. How are you going to... How are you going to cope with that? Like, you know, pressure's going to come from that. How are you preparing for that? Like, it's, you know, now you've got a statue and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, all the, the kick and yeah. all this stuff happened. You're, you know, probably known pretty worldwide now. Like, how are you going to cope with that pressure? I actually, I love pressure. I think yep. it's something that I relish with. And if if people expect me to, to take big marks, to keep big goals and all that sort of stuff, then I'll deliver as much as I can. And yeah. the other thing that I've, I've got... Um, mentally is that if I don't play to the standard that I expect I criticize myself um, as much as the next person and I want to work harder to yeah. get better yeah. but I don't get down on myself yeah. I think oh, that like could have been better and, yeah. and I've got to do better next week and everything but I don't think uh, I suck and, and yeah. like I can't do it because yeah. I know I can I just yeah. may feel plenty of reasons I might have an off game we all have our off days so yeah, yeah. We, we all yeah. hit the post from five meters out <laughs> segue <laughs> to the next question how was that that Get day for you, I think, just by memory. I'll never forget. It. I was watching it at the pub and just seeing it happen, and I, oh, I just, I, I felt very sorry for you. Um, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> so we've all been there, Paul. Hey, oh, oh, I have been. Try yes, and yeah. run in five minutes out and hit the goalpost. You, you will not be able to do it. it. You yeah. can't. It's, um, you know what? I've actually done something that people can't do. Exactly. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if anything. You should I, get more for Yeah, that. I should get nine points. <laughs> but um, no, yeah. How did was... you cope with the fallout from that game? You know, like, there was, you know, the video did the rounds on yeah. Facebook and people are saying fucking all the same type of shit that they usually sort of say. Yeah. Do you just have to put the phone down? Like, is that a... The first 24 hours were shit because obviously I... Like, I'm a footy fan. I know yeah, footy and yeah. we ended up losing that game. Under a goal. Under a goal. So yeah. obviously I felt that... Yeah. I had played a part in that. Yeah. Um, I missed a couple that hit yeah, the post yeah. close. So I'm very you aware that... You had a shocker. I honestly, just, I just shocker. had the worst day ever. And <laughs> you know how sometimes nothing goes right? Yeah. That was that was our day. Um, That's most days on the footy field for me. <laughs> yeah. Nothing goes right. <laughs> well, no, you, you'll you're get no there. You're no stranger to copying your stuff on social media. But on a bit of a light hard note, when you missed that goal, how long did it take before you thought, oh, shit, there's that social media aspect too. I'm going to get killed for this. Uh, it, honestly, immediately after, I knew I knew it was coming because because I know that if I saw that, I would laugh at it yeah. myself. So I had to put myself, it's hard, I had to put myself in the position of a fan and I would call my, I would say, oh, I could kick that every day of the yeah. week and all that sort of bullshit. So I, I did that, but I knew it was going to be brutal. So I deleted yeah. all my socials for, I reckon, 48 hours. Yeah. Which was fine because um, my my family were down visiting, yeah. so I got to spend time with them the next morning. We had breakfast and all that sort of stuff. But I, yeah, as soon as I got <laughs> back on socials and I was kind of over it and yeah. over the loss, we were moving on to next week. I laughed at it. I sent it to my mates. Yeah, you have and to. I you? reckon I sent it to you. You did. I got a. And I think I got a text message from you about 20 minutes after the game. <laughs> just LOL in big letters. <laughs> <laughs> so you, de you obviously knew that I would have been watching. Uh, yeah. You knew that I would have. It was. But yeah. you, I, you have to laugh. Like, yeah. that kind of stuff, there's no way out of it. Like, you're either going to laugh or cry. So, um, the next week was going to come around just yeah. the same as it would have if I had have kicked the goals. So, yeah. I, yeah, I had to find a way around it, and I did. So, and now I laugh, and I'm sure in 10 years I'll laugh about it as well. So, all good. Speaking of 10 years, so 10 years down the track when, you know, like, footy will be winding up. I don't know about the lifespan of a boxer, but I assume that's sort of coming to an end too in that sort of time frame what's next for you what what do you sort of want to get into outside of sport well uh i invest 
a lot personally and so I've, I've bought a home recently and then um, I'm investing in shares and all that sort of stuff because yeah. I would love to be able to retire young. I think yeah. that's that's everyone's goal and yeah. I think realistically I can do it if I'm smart now. Yeah. So with the advice of a lot of people, I'm trying to set myself up for in 10 years or yeah. hopefully more, Yeah. but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm doing and I, I want to help out my family yeah. financially and stuff if you don't make... What is it? Make hay while the sun shines. That's the one, yeah. yeah then yeah, yeah. there's no point in doing what I'm doing. It's exactly, yeah. it's not that fun to get punched in the head. It's also not <laughs> fun to, to get tackled and yeah. slammed out uh, in front of 20,000 people. So yeah. um, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to set up my life for after footy. And I don't know exactly what, but yeah. if, if this year is a trend, then I've got no idea what's coming. And it's going to be challenging, but it's going to be cool. Yeah. Taylor sort of the elephant in the room really with that statue situation i'm sure you've spoken to countless media countless people about it and had to explain yourself unfairly mind you but the way i see it right is the statue is a lot more than just what you personally have achieved as a footballer and i mean it's taken me a little while i've never been a massive detractor of women's football or anything like that but the one thing that really took me by surprise pleasantly is the fact that I'm a school teacher by trade and a lot of different little girls these days are coming up and saying that their favorite sport is footy. And I'm saying, oh, who do you go for? And they might say a Richmond or a Collingwood or some team like that. And then I say, who's your favorite player? Expecting, you know, a Dusty Martin or someone like that. But yeah. they're telling me Taylor Harris or another AFLW star. So I really think you're paving the way there. Or Paul and- Robinson. Yeah, well, <laughs> but the point being, I think it's great. Like, I plan to have a family one day, and if I have daughters, I'd love for them to see that as an option to play AFLW at the, top, at the highest level. I have mates that have daughters, and same situation. It's great now that kids can sort of bond with their daughters over that. Could you explain, I suppose, from your perspective, the purpose of that statue and what it really means? Yeah, well, as you said, it's uh, well, it actually has nothing to do with my footy, and I've said publicly plenty of times I've done nothing to warrant a sca- statue on the footy field, and I'm very aware of that. And I'm the first person, and Paul knows me yeah. well enough to know that I'm not the kind of person who thinks that um, on in the footy field, like yeah, I've kicked a few goals and taken a few marks, but nothing any more spectacular than the next yeah. player. Um, but I think, as you just said, for for younger people, and the people who are against the statue are older older guys generally and that's you know like have your own opinion that's fine but do not detract from a young girl or boy's dream to look up and in the city or around the mcg you'll you'll come around and see nikki winmar and um cricket uh idols and whoever else is there lee matthews or wherever his statue is but you don't come across a women's Mm. footy player and you would think that's probably a few years down the track but it's here sooner so why not make the most of it and let these young kids actually think, oh, cool, like maybe I could play footy like that too. And I know a bronze statue is pretty old school and, and kind of random, but yeah. Um, it's, yeah, just another thing that they can be walking down along the MCG, maybe going to a footy game uh, and walk out. And after they've just experienced Carlton win and yeah. then come out and think, oh, I'd love to be able to play for them one day, but realise, oh, I'm not... I can't play in the men's team and then yeah. they come out and there's a girl yeah. you know what I mean so I think that's yeah. something that people miss and obviously people are caught up on the idea that they think that it's for my playing ability which it's not so if you get past that if you understand that it's a lot more than me and it's about what had happened in a bit of a change in time and and then you can realize that it's actually helping people then you should if you're a normal person accept it and think oh yeah fair enough this is this is good for some people so I'll just leave it I believe the statue actually literally spells it out saying more than a kick yeah. so I mean <laughs> does it really annoy you having to constantly explain yourself whether it's to the media or the public and how do you deal with online trolls because obviously that kick photo itself went infamous um, and if it doesn't affect you surely uh, you would worry about the effect that it has on your friends and family yeah I uh, I never spend time trying to explain to mm-hmm. people who either can't read or <laughs> or just have no idea or no interest in learning I, I can't be bothered I've got other things to do so I've you'll never find me trying to explain to people I'm happy to chat with you guys and kind of like we can um, have a convo and it'll make its way to Facebook and maybe someone will have changed their mind but I'm not directly saying Mm. to old mate who said um, oh don't deserve it whatever I'm not talking to them I'm just yeah trying to we're having a chat and um, getting a bit more understanding probably this particular pod podcast and video is more of a getting to know me on a personal level so yeah I guess my opinion in that aspect is um, yeah I'm happy to explain how I feel and stuff but I'm never gonna 
reply to anyone's comments mm. and um, I'm a, what's the word, I'm a... Well, you can't win, really. I yeah. don't think there's any way... I'm never going to win, but I'm yeah. all about, del- like, I'll delete anyone comments shit on my posts. Yeah. I'll, like, you blocked me. My blocked list is that long. <laughs> I block my mates sometimes if they say some random shit I don't like, like, and then I'm like, oh, no. Nah, In all seriousness, though, Taylor, you, that's what the modern athlete has to do, especially someone that has the criticism uh, that you receive. Otherwise, it can have dangerous effects on your mental health. I well, mean, it's crazy. Yeah, but it's, for me, personally, it's... I remove things on my personal posts because I know that my mum, yeah. my nan, who shouldn't have Facebook, but she does, <laughs> um, and yeah, plenty of other people who are close to me are going to read these just because mm. probably by default on yeah. their yeah. page, I don't want them to be exposed to that. It doesn't hurt me at all because I couldn't care less what old mate who I've never met thinks, yeah. mm. but it does affect my mum, especially if it's a personal attack. Yeah. So it's really easy for me just to swipe, delete, block, yeah. all gone. Um, but yeah, I, I'm doing it not because you've got to me, but because just in yeah. case anyone else yeah. is affected. And kids, obviously kids oh, yeah. are following me and they yeah. don't want to see s- anyone swears on my stuff, they're gone. Yeah. Anyone says anything like sexist, homophobic, yeah, yeah. you're gone. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's probably a waste of your time if you want to <laughs> troll, yeah. troll me. Like obviously there's pages I don't have any control over and yeah. I don't read them. So I, like, and if I do, I laugh about it most yeah. of the time. So. <laughs> What was the process like before this happened? So the, the statue, how did how did it all come about? Who contacted you about it? And what, what did you first think when someone said to you, I don't know whoever it was, but when they said, oh, look, we're thinking of doing a statue, how did you, resp- like, how did you respond? Were you take- how taken yeah. back were you well, by that? It was a, I can't even remember, to be honest, exactly how the process was, but it was a NAB, it was a NAB thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. NAB um, backed it and took the initiative to, to, I guess, start it all off. And initially it was a very... We, we want to do this, but we're not sure if it'll get over the line thing. Yeah. So obviously, logistically, they had to get all the measurements and all the um, everything in order to then get the tick off. Because yeah. um, statues aren't cheap. No, so, I, can't, I can't imagine. Yeah. Because um, I said, can you make another one for mum? Because she wants in the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, like we, we can't. It's, come on, Taylor. You, Rude. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, Maybe you can steal the one at Fenswick. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what I was going to do. I've, yeah, I've got a ute now. Um, so, <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, but, yeah, so yeah. did all these measurements. And I, my only um, requirement was not to make it like the Cristiano Ronaldo one. Oh, I, don't know if, I don't know if you can drop yeah. that into the video, but it's, <laughs> it's mangled. And I was like, yeah, sure, as long as you don't completely fuck it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they did, an, obviously, a really good job, and they got everything right. And, yeah. Um, Even the tattoos, I think that's what a lot of people might not understand or you don't see on TV. If you go up close, the tattoos are yeah. there, and your girl's covered in them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got could a you, few. If it's not personal or anything, could you explain some of those tattoos? Did you want to see the one on my ass? No, not right now. If yeah. I'm trying to avoid. Well, you, seriously, you have tattoos everywhere, don't you? You have uh, tattoos have... there. Do you have one on your lip? Is that right? Yeah, I have. Um, it says Straya. Yep, one on the lip, <laughs> in your ear. So. Uh, yeah, I've got a few. I um, basically I, if I feel like getting a tattoo, I get a tattoo. Yep. I'm not the kind of person that thinks Over about thinks the future too much because, <laughs> um, I figure that. Tattoo removals come this far in a few years, it can it can go further. <laughs> Be a full clean skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I just get them, and some of them mean stuff, some of them don't. Some of them are funny, some of them are I regret. Um, so. <laughs> but that, but that's fine too, you know. Like um, I've got a really shitty dolphin on my ankle that I don't know. Show us. I'll show. <laughs> you. There it is. I've half I've oh, had one laser awesome. treatment for it. It's the worst you can imagine. Um, that's a dolphin. It's kind of, it's almost tribal, but it's just shit. Yeah. And then, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm either going to cover it up or I'm going to get it off. But. Is there enough room on there for a premiership tat if yeah. you're playing one? Yeah. Well, I was considering asking Carlton if we can change from baggers to dolphin. Carlton dolphin. Carlton <laughs> dolphin. <laughs> so we'll see if that gets, gets through. I think I've got a good chance. Taylor, thank you very much for joining us. Where do we find you online on social media? Uh, well, my Instagram is Taylor underscore Harris. My Twitter is Taylor Harris with two S's because... Someone else has got my no. real name spelling. <laughs> what else is there? Fa- Facebook? Facebook. I'm on there. Not on YouTube? No, I'm not on YouTube. Not uh, oh, I was and then I deleted <laughs> all, my, all my 12-year-old lame videos of me riding my bike. and. Ah, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. They're gone. You can't find them. God, there is no trace of them? There's no... Oh, I've, I have them. You've got them. Me, me and some of my friends, selected friends, have them. But just the most How lame... How do we get our hands on it? You... Is it as bad as Darcy Vecchio dressing up as a giant big end? 
No, oh, yes, it's worse. <laughs> it's worse, yeah. Um, but you, yeah, no, you will never be able to see them. They will be destroyed. That's right. Money talks. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We can find Paul at the Resi's Football. You can find myself at NC Football with Jackson Clark. But most importantly, please follow us online at Off The Player. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching us. 